Charles drew breath in short, ragged drafts as he staggered to his car. It hurt much more than he thought it might, getting shot. Not that Charles was the sort of man whose line of work put him in much danger of being shot. He wasn't a soldier or a pirate or anything. For a second he wondered, do we still have pirates? Charles was an office worker. Fuck! He gasped as he stumbled against the car and fell down to the snow-covered ground. Ha ha ha! He laughed. Though it sounded brave, he knew that he was laughing more out of fear than anything else. His blood was everywhere. How did he get into such a state? Shit where I ate, he muttered to himself. Thoughts of Miranda's beautiful bare naked body underneath him as they fucked on her marital bed flooded his mind as his blood leaked out onto the floor. God, she was almost worth it, he thought. The affair had started three months before. Miranda had hunted him, practically. High heels, pencil skirts, revealing blouses, flirty conversation, bitten bottom lips and big shining eyes. She'd singled him out and taken him like she might have taken some chocolates from a shop shelf. Charles had wanted it, though. He'd wanted to have her since he first saw her. Didn't matter to him that she was married to Raymond from shipping, two floors down. Hell, it even added to the excitement. Quickie on the back stairs, blowjob in the toilets, great fun. Problem was, as much fun as it had been fucking and sneaking around behind Raymond's back, Miranda's darling husband hadn't taken it quite so well when knowledge of the affair had found him. Raymond came to their game reading from a different rule book. Charles grimaced as he played the scene over in his mind. Miranda had been wearing a bright red strapless satin corset, white stockings, red high-heeled shoes and a Santa hat. She was bent over the arm of the sofa with a coy look on her face as she wiggled her bum and looked back at Charles over her shoulder. Charles was just about to open the fly on his tented trousers when the front door of the little cottage flung open. Happy New Year, babe, Raymond called, interrupted by the sight of lipstick smeared all over his wife's face and that posh tit from work. What was his name? Carl or Mark or Charles? Charles, he thought. It was odd that the first detail to register should have been the smeared lipstick. Not the position that his wife was in, nor the fact that her sex was on display. The lipstick was what set him off. It runs that way sometimes. Raymond dropped the present he'd bought and reached for the shotgun that had kept the umbrellas company by the front door for years, and let her rip. Miranda took the first shell, her pretty head blasted open at such short range. Charles, stunned, stood rooted to the spot as the muzzle of the twelve bore swung on him and the next shell hit him in the chest, knocking him to the ground as if he'd been hit by a truck. Sometime later he was awoken by another bang and he lifted his head to see that Raymond was sitting on the sofa next to Miranda, missing most of his head and the shotgun lay nearby still smoking. No, nope, Raymond hadn't taken it well. Bubbles of blood were forming on Charles's shirt as his lungs foamed through the buckshot wounds in his chest. His vision was getting dark and he realised that it had come to his end. Wonder what it'll be like, he murmured to himself as he drew what was to be one of his very final breaths. At the very last he had a fleeting thought regarding his funeral. Would people come to see him off? He wouldn't want to be lonely after all. Yeah, sure they'd come. He looked to his feet and tutted himself. My shoes scuffed. And with that, Charles finally died. Opening his eyes, Charles could see that he was in a queue of people stretching ahead as far as the eye could see. The ground beneath his feet was dry and cracked and disturbed. He looked to the sides of himself and saw that he was in a city. He wasn't sure which city, as he'd most certainly never been there before. The buildings were of irregular sizes and differing architectural styles, like a city designed by Nicolae Ceausescu. The buildings looked as though they had suffered some sort of nuclear explosion, and here and there, trees that seemed to have large, wicked thorns where leaves might otherwise have been, made up little groves and parks. Statues of winged sword-carrying angels watched over the queue with impassive stony eyes, and up above the sky was on fire. Hmm, that's odd. Charles was growing concerned to say the least. Yes, the sky's on fire. The woman in front of him in the queue spoke without turning round. Charles thought on this for a minute. His hands came to rest on his chest and he could feel that his wounds were somehow healed. Great, he said to himself. Actually in the queue to get into hell, is that it? At that point, an enormous muscle-bound man who had the head of a boar and carried a cruel whip in his hand walked up to the line, sniffing at the people there assembled as a lewd tongue darted out of his mouth to inspect one of his nostrils. Yep, I reckon so, the woman answered, again not turning around.